Sorry, team. I, um, I was trying to show everyone this beautiful light here at this beautiful place we're staying at, and, uh, and I think I must have gone uh, stop. So I'm hoping my little mate Roz can join me again. Here she is. Ad, baby, ad. Oh, sorry, Roz. Oof. Oof. Sorry, love. They're pretty unforgiving, these phones. I was showing you the chandelier. And I think as I went past, my thumb flicked the pin. I thought you might have. Oh, hopeless. Been. Hopeless, girl. Um, yeah, so this is a beautiful place. There's a wedding here today. That's how nice it is. It oh, is wow. top shelf, girl. Top shelf. Like... And it's my sort of place. It's oh, very quaint. Great. Like I love the quaint stuff, you know, the olden day stuff. And I like yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, oh, that's so great. You, you've that's sold great. five houses. Um, Melifon Street hasn't yep. sold before you ask, so we put that one to bed straight away. Oh, you beat oh, me! Oh, got him first. <laughs> if you've got a few lookers, so we're just, we're apparently we're getting close. Apparently, so we'll wait and see. Oh, it won't we'll be long. Off. Won't be long. Hopefully, yeah. Um, and what else? So we, I was in, um, I was in Sydney and Melbourne for last week, and we uh, yeah, had a great time down there. And do you remember last week I was telling you I was doing a little project with the homeless people? Yeah, I was going to ask mm, how that's going. Yeah, well, that went well. That was amazing. And before we even get to that, so we're on Care Factor Two this week, right? Care Factor Part Two. I'm going to yeah. put you on the spot if you can, because I'm near up for it. Um, and I'm going to give you a lot. Just think while I'm talking, because I know you can multitask, you can walk really and chew gum at the same time. Um, what have you done this week, care factor wise? What have you done to to help people out? So I know you've sold five homes. Um, was there anything? What do you do after you sell a home? How do you make your clients feel a bit a bit loved, like they're your only client, so they think they're your only? Oh, it was good. We actually had a I had a conversation about this this morning with a potential yeah. vendor just regarding tenants mm -hmm. actually and when someone's uh, renting a house and the owners are looking at putting them on the market and you know um, I think a lot of agents don't treat tenants you know like um, a really important part of the transaction mm -hmm. but I you know I've, I've been a, a tenant before when a house has gone on the market yeah. so uh, you know one of the things we like to do you know is to obviously reassure the yeah. tenants and going out and actually having a meeting with them when the house goes on the market to explain how it works, you know, mm. get a sense of how they're feeling. Mm. A lot of people are worried about, you know, buyers mm. going through their stuff and opening their mm. cupboards and, um, you know, tenants have a lot of rights. Mm. So to be able to actually sit with them, um, maybe buy them a carton of beer or, you know, a bunch of flowers or a voucher or something mm. just to sort of let them know that you understand that it's their yeah, home. Yeah. And, um, you know, that, yeah, it's just important for them to know that you aren't just going to barge yeah. on in and, you know, giving them the courtesy mm. of a phone call to arrange inspections before they um, just get an entry notice shoved in their letterbox mm. sort of thing. I mean, they've got families and kids too. So to try and fit around their shift work and kids and families and just show a bit of common courtesy always goes a long way. So Maybe that's why you're doing so well in business, girl, because you just care a little bit extra than, you know some other people yeah. in your industry? Well, it's interesting, you know. <laughs> I spoke with someone out of town, um, you know, today and she was talking about, you know, that a lot of real estate agents in general have a bad reputation mm. and a lot of them come across as quite arrogant. But I think, you know, if you can be a human being yeah. about it, it is important, Lisa. Yeah. Hello, Lisa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but it is, it is, I think it's just, it's just, um, you know, being caring. I, I mean, I've got a vendor at the moment. We've got her property under contract. She's busy with work. She's stressed to the max. We've got, you know, some issues with the council and building mm -hmm. and pest inspections that we've had to yeah. deal with. And, you know, just taking that pressure off. I think a lot of real estate agents just stick it under mm -hmm. contract and then wait for the solicitors to you know, to get it all done, but you, you need to be involved. Mm. And I think that's what shows the difference between an agent who actually cares mm. uh, and somebody who just wants to do the transaction for the, for the end result and get mm. the money. But I think understanding along the way that it's a stressful time. Mm. I mean, you're selling the biggest asset. A lot of people are losing mm. money, obviously. Mm. Uh, so, you know, showing, showing that you actually give yeah. a damn and working hard right throughout that process. Well, that's so, amazing. It's you mentioned about 4,000 things in one there, which is great from tenants to buyers to sellers, all sorts of stuff. And um, 
And obviously it's what sets you apart. And you can see from Lisa, she says, as a renter, she feels that love. And we've got Faith on, we've got Catherine, Crystal, Ian Powell, Narelle Bread. So, oh, Steve and Jackie Lindley, shall we hold on to Harry Carol Lambert? And what you're so, Matt Hawkins. Yeah. Matt Hawkins is engaged to my to no. my niece, Macau. No. Macau is he's engaged to my niece. They're in Townsville at the moment and moving to Brisbane soon. How are you, Matt? Good on him. Good on him. Oh. And guess what? Do you want to hear the biggest thing in Gladstone no. today? Yeah. My beautiful little girl, my youngest, turns 20 today. So happy birthday, Sarah. She's into her 20. Happy yes. birthday. I have no teenagers Ooh. left, Anton. I am officially oh. old. You are even though you only look 20, girl, you young spunk. You only look 20. I can't believe it. Yes, but the years have yeah, flown. You. So happy birthday, Sarah. Zachy will be 20 next year, so that'll be um, good too. So we'll be in the same boat as you. No teenagers in the house anymore. Thanks, Crystal. Um, it's a happy birthday to see you. Oh, so. Good stuff. Wish her, wish her our best with you, girl. I'm sure Zachy knows. I, don't know I will do, definitely. I don't even know if I've ever met Sarah, so... I think I met Brendan with you. Um, possibly not. She's actually heading. She's heading down to the Taylor Swift concert for the weekend, so she's having a, the biggest of birthday Could parties. Lisa Kefford saying you can have one if you need one? No, no Lisa, I don't want your teenagers. I'm sorry, Thanks, honey. Eddie. Thank you, anyone, for the offer, Lisa. That's really kind of you, girl. Thanks for and the you offer. Appreciate it. She's thinking about us for us. We're saying, well, you know what? Yes, We're she saying, is. Very kind of very you, Lisa. Kind. Very, very kind. We're going to deny this <laughs> So, thank you for that. Let me tell you about last weekend. Holy, okay. I swear I've got two beautiful girls here. Can I just very, very quickly check these girls out here, Ross? Hello. Have a look at these punks. These girls are all the oh, hello. today. We're in the live. We go to about 4,000 countries here, two girls. Hello. How, how was the wedding? Hello. Was it? Was Do you girls have speech? How am I putting that out? Hey, Jason. Yes. Oh, yeah. Are you going to get sloshed? No. Right. Because I'm definitely trying to try to Oh, no tears today. So it's yes. a no tear day. Right. We met Lauren out here this morning. She's the lady that would be definitely worth coming. She's very good. <laughs> she is. Good she on is. you, girls. Thanks for coming on live. Aren't they beautiful? Isn't that great? Yeah. Um, Lisa Kefford, pain in my arm. Yes. Uh, six foot four, Pima, whatever that means. Six foot four. Oh, that would be her nuts. teenager. Right. Beautiful dresses, aren't they? That's her teenager. Oh, yeah. Aren't they beautiful dresses? Beautiful girls, beautiful small, <laughs> beautiful place. Life's good. So let me tell you about my weekend. So I go down there. Well, here okay. comes the bride and groom. <laughs> Unbelievable. No, it's nice. It's just the bride. And it's the cameraman by the look of it. So we'll, we better not grab her. She looks very in the zone. Um, and she can, <laughs> they're, they're staying at the bed and breakfast. Her parents and friends are the people, aren't it? So I go to Sydney, right, with the sole intention of going and talking home. Um, so I go to Sydney, right, it's Friday night and we're down there and I'm combing the streets looking for the right people. And how'd you go, mate? Good? Good on your brother. There's the groom. He's looking happy too. He'll be even happy tonight, I reckon, the big fella. Um, <laughs> when do they look a bit already? So, and so I go down and Friday night, and I've got to tell you, Ross, I was amazed. I was amazed on so many fronts. Can I tell you something? You and I need to go and do that together, and do a life from down there because it's it's an eye open in so many ways. It's very humbling, isn't well, it? Yes, and yes, and yes, yes, and yes. I was so it is humbling. That's one way of putting it, and it's probably the other end of the scale too. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'm hearing you. Yes. Way. So, from yours and my perspective, so the first question that I had to answer was, "Are these people happy?" And the answer is an absolutely resounding yes. They'll tell you they are. Right. Wow. So very, very happy. Wouldn't change it. Now, so did I really yep. believe that? Yes, and I'll tell you why. So they all receive like the dole or whatever. They all get some payment of some sort. So they've got an identity card that they walk into the bank with once a week and get their cash all which they spend on drugs and alcohol, right? Well, that's their choice. That's what they want to do. Not all of them, mm -hmm. I'm sure, but yes. Well, the ones I spoke to, it was pretty common. 
and they steal a lot. Oh, mm-hmm. they steal a lot too, by the way. So as I was sitting there, they brought over some stolen goods. And we're trying to get those bits of things off that go through the, the, the you know, the beat beat. Oh, yeah, magnetic beat. They couldn't get yeah. them so they smash and these things and they can only shoot. Well, if you steal them, they say, how else do we get shit? I said, okay, cool, right. So Phil, wow. first dude I spoke to, and there's probably two main conversations. First dude I spoke to, 13 years on the street, just turned 40. Um, and I said to him, how do you, you know, how do you survive and stuff? And I said, well, first thing I said, and his name is Jim. Jim, are you happy? Static, love it. Love, I've just moved to a new bench. We move around each night, but I've moved in the room. Wow. Um, and he said, yeah, I've got some good friends. And there's this like whole community, Ross, right? This whole community yeah. of homeless people. And they all sort of know each other and they're all sort of in the same area. So they're happy. One, they're happy. And he talked me through the drugs that he was on and showed me all the things on his arms. He's trying to get off them. And, and I said, so you get paid every week. He said, yeah, here's my ID card. So this is where I learned all the stuff from. And um, I said, so you could probably go and get a house. And he sort of avoided that question like it was – he didn't want to talk about not living on the streets. Like, I think he's just – and I, I sort of thought about that institutionalised thing. Like, he just, they, I just don't think they know any, any better. But I'll tell you in a sec, another conversation that I had with David, who was, these two main conversations really rocked my world. And he um, – now, get this. So I turn up and I talk to people in the um, homeless care industry, right? And I said, what do I do? I want to go and talk to these people. What do I do? They said, take them – Woolies vouchers. So I said, okay, so we'll take yeah. Woolies vouchers. Get this, and this will spin you out. Conversation that I had with David, which is the next one after Jim, they get too much food. There's these vans that turn up, you know, at all different wow. times, and they've got so much food, they can't give it away. They're offering it to me, and I'm just standing there talking. You know what? You know what David did? Wow. Got this. David said, Anton, I'm sick of sandwiches. I wish I'd bring something else. True story. And I'm, so I oh. said to this boy, I said to this bloke, you get paid every week, man. And he was on a disability pension. So at 16, he's been on the streets for 15 years. He's, he's on wow. a disability pension and he's got plates in his back, right? So he can't work, he reckons, and maybe he can. And I said, man, and he wasn't, he wasn't a drugger. He said he does, he likes alcohol more than drugs. So I said, mate, you could, you could use that money and go. He said, I know I could. And he said, but you know what, Anton? He said, it's safer on the streets. And I thought, now that's weird. Yeah. Safer. Sa- really? Yeah. So we got Scotty Ray and Daryl and Kiria. We're just talking about a little. Katrina. See, I don't see you. Susan. I don't see you like me. Hey, guys. Um, so, um, so I says to him, why don't you go and do that? And he says, it's safer. And I said, right. Is it emotionally safe or is it physically safe? G'day, Ray. How are you? Um, hey, Ray. Hey, well, Ray wants to do a live with me too one day. Well, so maybe the two of us, when we're together, we'll do one with you. Maybe. Book she it was in. all freaking out about. We've got a lot. We've got a lot of people messaging us on our page, uh, mm. wanting to um, book in for lives for for some things coming up, which is really. I don't exciting. see any of them. See them. Hello, Ray. I don't Eileen. even know what's going on on that page. I don't see anything, so I don't know why. But that's okay. I'll have to get. Oh, you should you should be able mm-hmm. to because you're mm-hmm. an admin. Maybe get Emily. Well, I'll get Emily on the job. She can maybe <laughs> admin or something. Um, so anyway, no, we've got someone wanting to do a book. Oh, so. shit. Let's go. So, so yeah. this David, I says to this David, why don't you go and live somewhere? And he says it's safer out here. And I said emotionally or physically, and he said more emotionally. I said right, because he says he's got this community of people around him, right? And you know he's got everything he wants. He said. Why would I, Anton? I've got all as much food as I want, seriously. I don't have any stress in my life. I don't have to work. He said, I've got a swag. This is no shit. He said, I said, what about some winter? Yes, please, says Ray. Yeah, yeah, Ray, we'll bring you on next Friday Arve at this time if you can. Hey, Ross, we could bring Ray on. Hi, Frenzy. Hey, Ian. You- uh, maybe we've got – I've got one of our council uh, – The one of the people running for council coming next what? Friday. So um, I've organised um, two for next week for us to interview a couple of the, um, yeah, the nominees for the council election. Shit, are we going to do – how do we do two? Then we, we, we just – No, separately. They won't be together. I don't want any That's blood. I, I don't, like <laughs> don't want any blood spilled. 
No, I'm sure they won't be. They're very nice people. So, but I'm trying to get around to all of the people who have nominated for the council. Can we get Patrick? So back to the homeless people, Anton. We digress. We digress. So what? What do they? What do they do all day? Nothing. These people. What did they tell you that they actually do all day? Talk and walk and just sit. And and one thing I didn't ask. I mean, we, all day, every day. What else is there to do? And steal shit, and do drugs and alcohol. So would you believe? So here. That, yeah, it doesn't sound appealing. No, to me, me either, right? And Joel Boylan too, and Barbara Sawtell. Barbara Sawtell. Hey, Jolly. Hey, Donna. So good. They hey, get, I love your high voice. You go like, hi, 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 beautiful. Hi, Bob. I oh, know. I'm saying hi to her because she's in the <laughs> office next door working. <laughs> So anyway, get this, get this, I go to give him some vouchers. And and when it's like, I thought, here I am. Remember I was talk, we were talking about Care Factor last week? Um, and like I thought it would make them really happy if I actually gave them something. They get enough, they get enough yeah. stuff. Everyone's always giving me something. So then, do you know what? Get this. I gave, like, I, I had Woolies vouchers because people said Woolies vouchers because then they can go and choose something different to what they get. And I said, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I give them to Jim. I give Jim these, these like 20 bucks. It's not a lot, but it was something. I just thought I was happy to give him 100 if that's what he wanted. I was just, here's something. And he said, oh, he said, yeah, yeah no, he said, well, don't worry about it, mate. He said, oh, all right, look, I'll take it. Thanks. And he said, here, have a bottle of water. He said, they give me all this water to drink. And he gave me something. He gave me a bottle of water. Here's a homeless dude. Got so much beef given, wow. which is, I think is beautiful, which is really nice. So I thought, oh, thanks, Jim. He could be what? And it was like, I was thirsty. It's hot as shit, too, down there. So, and he said, and he must have been really antsy about it because he said, look, it hasn't been opened, right? So, and there was a real sort of energy around, Has, I haven't touched it, I haven't opened it. So I don't know whether he's sick or what, I don't know, Sarah Ford, another gun triathlete. So I said, oh, thanks so much, man. I said, making sure, yeah, making sure you knew he hadn't put anything in it or knowing that it was actually there water. You go, absolutely. So, and I was really yeah. appreciative, actually. And I said, oh, thanks, Eve. So anyway, get this, this David dude, he starts coughing while I'm down there. This is serious. <laughs> And I said, man, and like I, I grew up with bronchitis and I grew up with a grandfather who died of emphysema and I know what a bad cough sounds like. And I said to this dude, mate, that's like, that's a, that's a bad one, man. And get this, you know what he said? He said, yeah, I've been diagnosed with emphysema. You know, that's fatal. He said, yeah, I'm dying. He said, I'm wow. dying at 31. As he lights up another dollar. Wow. As he lights up another dollar. Oh, my God. Chris, he said, oh, well, I'm dying anyway, so why not? <laughs> Do you know what I? Do you know what is, is interesting? You've you've just said that these people that you spoke to that are homeless in Sydney are all happy. They said they, they, said were, they happy. were as happy as a pig in shit. So when we're talking about happiness and care factor, then uh, if they, you know, the majority, and we're not saying all of them, but if you're saying the majority of people that you met, um, they on are on government payments, mm. they have uh, obviously drug and alcohol addiction mm -hmm. issues. And they do nothing all day and they're happy to do nothing all day. Yeah. And they just like being in that community of other homeless yeah. people. It poses the question, do they actually not know anything other than that? That's, that's what or I think it is. are they not? Secondly, are they not actually telling you the truth? And thirdly, um, it probably poses the question, how much do you actually need to be happy? And that was what I went down there to answer. That question, the third one. Mm. So let me touch on what you said then. I think they were being as honest as they knew how to be. So yeah. quite um, um, like they're really hard to talk to. Hey, Brandy. Hey, Lisa. They're quite hard to talk to because they're all over the place. David was sort of quite direct, but Jim, like it went from his dad building the park that we were sitting in to when he, when he was a boy growing up and, you know, his parents came from somewhere and he's in trouble with the law and the police thought he killed another police officer. That's why he's homeless. Like like a bizarre story, seriously, like a, you know, crazy. So that's what I was going to ask you. Did you did you ask them what <laughs> made them, what in their life made them become homeless? Yeah. What situation yeah. and how old were they when that happened? Car accident for David. So two of them I asked and the other three or four were sort of just, in the in the area when I was having a conversation, this young woman who seemed to do the stealing, I feel a bit ended up with the stolen goods. Um, I think I think the fact that there's no responsibility 
There's no, and and it's easy. It's an easy life. And Tom King, my first cousin, old oh, Tommy boy, what a great lad. Tom's on today. He was never on Facebook. He's only new. He's a Facebook virgin. This bloke. Oh, hi Tom. Yeah, well done. Drinking. Now you get to listen to me and Rosman on a Friday hour. So, um, <laughs> see what you're missing out on, Tom. You're missing out on, brother. <laughs> so, um, yeah, look, this is what I think, Ros. This is my takeaway. They get a lot of stuff, which I don't begrudge them because it must be a shit life, right? It, you're right. It doesn't take much. Although they're, they're happy. happy at the end of the day. It doesn't take much to make them happy. Yeah. They've got more than they need, seriously. Oh, David, he was in a suit coat. I said, shit, you're dressed up, man. And he said, yeah, I've got it. It's a freebie. He said, freebie. Wow. They just turn up with all these. We were talking about Vinny. We were talking about Vinny's last mm. week. So there you go. And he said, oh, they just turn up with free clothes every week. You know, you've got, just got to be there on Tuesday. Wow. So there's so many. I didn't realise this. There's so many community organisations out there doing great work, right, to look after these people. Um, yeah. And I'll tell you what I really got out of all of this was that when he said it's safer out here, now that really is a uh, live and let live, says Ray, and I get that, Ray. I get each yeah, to right. their own. I'm not – and Ros and I aren't – Hey, Ros and I are positive. I'm trying to understand it. This was a project for me. I'm trying to understand what was going on down there because I've never been exposed to this before. So I'm getting out of my comfort zone and going and doing different stuff. Um, I think it's a fear thing, Ros. Like I think the community keeps them strong. So they sort of, most of them hang in sort of groups. Yes, yeah, they go to bed early. So they're all asleep by nine. I was looking for them early and they're all asleep and I didn't want to wake them up. And then I only found a couple that were asleep. And then the, it was like a 7.30 dinner van turned up. But then there was like a 10.30 dinner van turned up. So there was like a supper one. So they were up at oh, okay. again. Yeah. So what did I learn very quickly in a nutshell? They're all happy. I think they're fearful to leave. They don't know any different. They're long-term. This is 13, 15-year people. They're prob- there's, no, there's no real requirement for them to do any different because they get a lot of stuff, which I'm okay with, good on them. Um, and I think their life involves a fair bit of sort of illegal stuff, whether it's stealing or drugs. David was really grateful that I gave him the Woolies voucher. He was a bit dirty with me because he said, oh, it's like 11 o'clock at night. The shops are shut now. I can't go and buy more vodka because he loves vodka. I said, well, oh, sorry. Wow. I'm sorry, bro. I should have. He'd sit there for half an hour. He said, oh, half an hour ago would have been right or something like that. I said, oh, sorry, bro. I said, tomorrow, man. They'll be open at 10 in the morning. Get in there then, bro. So, um, so that, that would have been, I'm just thinking about, well, it's bringing up so many things, uh, questions in my mind because, you know, being somebody who loves to keep busy and loves to, you know, always have something to do and loves to exercise mm-hmm. and, you know, be with family. And mm-hmm. I mean, I think about all the things that we do in mm-hmm. a day and how much I love coming mm-hmm. to work and being busy mm-hmm. at work. And, you know, we were talking about last week, what, how happy you and no. I are with our very mm-hmm. full full lives and you know i can't think of anything more boring um and i know they probably don't have well a lot of them probably do have a choice but you know the situation that they're in a lot of people probably don't know how to get out of that uh but for 13 years to just sit around the streets and you know steal and do those things um because you you know that you're getting fed at night and obviously it wouldn't be overly comfortable for them but it's just a very interesting you know to, to sort of take out of that that they're so that's happy right. with yeah. their lives like that. And, and I think, you know, that's but, really interesting. But I think that's a good thing. Like I walked away really positive from those experiences because these people aren't sad. They're not um, distraught. Is it okay for me, mate? Oh, I've got the photographer coming oh, here. Check, check this out. Silent, silent, silent video. Um, yeah, good. He's just, good yeah, right, good. he's doing that. Good work. Oh, it's good work. Good. Oh, check you out. How cool. <laughs> is the bride there, Anton? She's looking beautiful. Look at, her. Look at the Oh, can I see the bride? I'm not sure. Can I see the bride? If she's okay with that. Hi, you're on Facebook. Congratulations. Isn't that beautiful, eh? And he even got a light. Oh, that's lovely. Not either photographer. Um, they have beautiful weather for their wedding. They got, an, oh, sorry, mate. they got an amazing day for sure, an amazing place. It's joint. I know why they picked it now. It's just beautiful. So, yeah, so I walked away from that experience sort of thinking that um, I was probably relieved more than anything because emotionally they're actually quite 
solid. Like, it's not as if, like... And you didn't know how that would go. When we spoke mm -hmm. last week, you had no... You, I knew you were going to speak with homeless mm -hmm. people when you were down mm -hmm. there, and I know that you're getting a lot of stuff together for your mm -hmm. book, but to actually not know how it's going to mm -hmm. go and then to walk away feeling yeah. like that, that's it pretty is. amazing. Yeah, no, I was, I was probably more surprised that, um, that they were so... They're comfortable in their own skin. They know their area, um, you know... They know where they're going to sleep. They got a swag. I don't know how he got it. I didn't ask. He probably stole it from somewhere or give, got, got it from St. Vinny's. They got enough food to eat. I know that there's a charity. There's actually a charity that advertises on television that you can actually purchase swags that are given to the there homeless. There you go. The all-weather There you swags. go. And that's yeah. what they have. And Jim, I shit you not, Ros, Jim would have been 150 kilo. Now. Oh, really? Massive individual. Massive man. Wow, is this Jim that's sick of yeah. sandwiches? Yeah, and, was, he, he, like he, and wow. he had a big bag. He had a big duffel bag, like literally, you know, the old army bags, those big old green duffel bag. Yeah. Full of food and water. Well, wow. shit you not, Ross. I sh it's like seriously. That's had, amazing. He would have at least had four, you know, those packs, those mango packs of sangers? At least five little boys. Actually, yeah. here, we're going to meet the bride and the groom very, very quickly, if that's okay. Um, this is Lauren and Dion. Hey, guys. And we've got a heap of Congratulations. Congratulations. Hey. You look beautiful. It's very relaxing. It's been nice. Now, where are we going? You look beautiful. Uh, we're going up. We're going up Mount yeah. Tim Beer while I take some more photos. Yes. And then we're going across to Barry Bay. Okay. Have a dream. Oh, lovely. Copious amounts. Yeah. Oh, that's done. Well done, guys. Good night. Jason Paul McMillan, Magic College, 1989. You should have asked them what makes them happy, Anton. <laughs> you should have said, what makes we you happy? Have. Shit, we will. We'll get them on the way. <laughs> you know what makes me really happy? I'm just going to just butt in here. See um, see Jessica Sharp. Well, that's my, my beautiful... Oh, you can't mm. see the name. So Jess Sharp's joined us. Oh, you probably got to swipe across the mm. bottom to see the conversation. Mm. Yeah, you got to swipe. I'm trying. Like Tinder, I think they said you swipe left or right. <laughs> Not that I'd know, Ros. <laughs> so beautiful, Jess. Jess is Jess is my um, my nephew's partner, Jess, and she's just had a beautiful baby oh, yeah. girl, Bethany, who is my oh, great niece. Beautiful. Very nice. Very cute. Good. Yes. Beautiful. Barb Hargraves, my son Brendan, is joining us. Hi, Brenda. Hi, yeah. oh, and Lacey. Hey, Lacey. Oh, Greg Brown has joined us as well. Hi, guys. So that was my homeless story. So I think from a care factor perspective, it did shock me a bit, though, because I, I thought yeah. I'd go down there and, and try to make people happy. I And, like, I was probably a bit selfish because I thought I'd go and give something away, put a smile on people's faces, but that was, was totally different to that. It was, that there was... So were they were they grateful for the vouchers or did they show so they not really it was not exciting for them yeah. or there was no gratitude I or away thinking, shit I shouldn't have really worried about because they didn't need it. Wow, that's surprising. And I'm sure that's not every single homeless person's case because it is only it's it's only no, a, a running, small running you know person. percentage, obviously. That's and I know we have we have a homeless population in Gladstone and there's a lot of places yeah. that, that really help out, like the Anglican Church, yeah. you know, they have the, the night where people can go and get a hot yeah. meal and, you know, there's there's so many charities in Gladstone that help the homeless mm. people here, but obviously it's not to the same, same extent as places mm. like Sydney. I visited Denver um, in Colorado yeah. a couple of years ago and all over the news, the whole time I was there, it was all over the news. They were having massive homeless um, population um, issues because there was so many mm. people and they were like ju just before the sun went down all the tents every footpath everywhere you went in Denver was just covered in tents with people who were setting up for the sleep mm. for the night and it was it was the same in Los Angeles you would sit in a restaurant um, like in the Alf Fresco outdoor dining mm. area and homeless people would actually be coming up asking for your leftovers and you know, there's a, a massive problem mm. over there, obviously, with homeless mm. people in, in America, but I would imagine the cities are a lot worse than places like Gladstone, although we do have a homeless population. Yeah. So, And it is difficult. Actually, I mean, 
it's interesting what you just said. You didn't get the reaction that you expected. Mm-hmm. So from a care pack, a care factor point of view, um, it's. But do you think that's because you had a perception that they were going to need what you had to offer them, and because it wasn't received the way that you thought it would be, it was a bit of a surprise. It was. It was a real surprise. And you know what? I was with. I'm, and you know. They took the time to talk to me, and I, I was, and I was just happy to be there. And I, I actually sort of said to him, "Is there any like I intimated that I can come back tomorrow night? Is there anything that you really want? You know, like I was happy to, to like if they wanted me to go and buy my bottle of pump or whatever. I, I'm, you know, shit, whatever, whatever to give yeah. a, give a bit because they were good enough to talk to me. Um, and they didn't really want for anything. That was the interesting thing. They, they didn't really, and well, they didn't ask. Hello, Renata. How are you? Here's the lady that owns this lovely person. Just for the people that have just joined, Mark, my mates Mark, Jody, and Darren, we're just talking about Anton's visited the home, some homeless people down in mm-hmm. Sydney. So we're just talking about the um, if they're happy, and um, we've, we're doing our live on the Care Factor Part mm-hmm. Two Care Factor today. So, so you're from a Care Factor. Sharon Hall. So I've Sharon. got um, Mark Cuffle, who is a Valleys Gun Valleys footballer. Lacey Ten Hegler asking this for Mark Cuffell, I reckon Mark Cuffell wins the prize for watching the most lives. He's giving live. me the most. Mark's on every giving week. Giving me the most fun. And he, yes, always definitely. Thumbs, thumbs up, thumbs, Mark. And I always give him these fun facts. <laughs> yes. The fun kick there. He's always there. Anyway, enough about that. So that was, that was just an interesting project. I'll tell you what else I did, Roz. So I went to see Jersey, went to see yeah. Jersey Boys on a Saturday night. I don't think I told you I was going to do yeah, I saw that. that. That would have been freaking good. outstanding. If you don't thank me now, get down to Capitol Theatre fast. We're playing till the film, but that was the best. I uh, saw them in Las good Vegas. Young. Good on you, Jersey Boys. The yeah. best. That was the best. Unbelievable. I, saw it. I enjoyed it so much. Then on the Saturday after, great show. I was in the mall, and there was these two young punk brothers, Ros and Bucking. Two twins called the Pierce brothers. Bucking. Mind you, they don't need a bus. I've found out they've just done like international tours, like their world plan. Um, but they said, "Oh, we're having some fun." I think people who busk love doing it. They do it for the love. See, it makes them happy, Anton. They don't need to do it. It makes they don't them need happy. To. They don't do it. Talking about happiness. They don't do it because they have to. They do it because they want to. And yes. you know what was funny? That's exactly right. And it makes I'm them talking happy. About happiness. Do what makes Gen- you happy. Yes, and more of it. Now, That's here's right. the thing. What was interesting was that um, they were selling CDs and, you know, they had their guitar case close to them and no one was going up and buying CDs. And they just said, oh, there's some CDs there. And I think some people thought they were for free because there's 20 bucks written on it, but there were, you know, no one could see it. And people were yeah. going in and not knowing they had to pay. So, and it was like an honesty system, obviously. So some people grabbed them for it and they saw that. And they, you know... They, they really, they couldn't care less whether they sold CDs or not, seriously. And they were so pumped for us. They were so energetic. Wow. He was doing somersaults around, like in front, playing the drums on the pavement. Then he ran over to a building and he was playing the drums on the building. It was such a good experience. Oh, sounds like Mason Rack. Are like they a bit nuts, are they? Yeah, they bang their drumsticks mm. on everything, anything that's mm. close by. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah so hey back to the back to the um back to the the week this week with the care factor yeah. and um I was just I was just blown away uh last weekend the Gladstone Turf Club did an amazing job at the races mm-hmm. um with the uh the Cox yeah, Plate. Yeah. So there was a massive amount of people mm-hmm. there and it was, um it was it was actually really good to see because like I said it's always good supporting mm-hmm. all the local businesses mm-hmm. and they they get so much out of a day Absolutely. like that. And to have so many people there and um, also supporting uh, the leukaemia fundraiser that happened mm-hmm. at the Rocky Glen afterwards, which I did the charity option oh, at that. Um, so, yeah, they had, they had a, um, a big charity fundraiser for the Leukaemia yeah. Foundation. So it's nice when I see things like mm-hmm. that happen. You know, um, you don't have to be a person to have the care factor. If you actually mm-hmm. put something in place, as a business mm-hmm. or a um, a company mm-hmm. uh, where you actually use a portion of what what you do, I, I know a lot of our Remax agents, mm-hmm. for example, they have a percentage of their commission goes to a charity 
um, you know, every, every time they sell a house. So, you know, talking about care factor from a company point of view or a business point of view, and it doesn't always have to be monetary. You know, I know people that volunteer um, their time, you know, doing things like charity auctions or helping with, um, you know, with, with functions uh. and events like we have around town here all the time. So it's, it's really mm. nice to also, I suppose, as a business, not just do it to make the money, to actually see what you can, tr can contribute back to the mm -hmm. community. And I heard um, with the cruise ship this week, um, there's, over, there's over 100 volunteers, I think, from, um, who go down and welcome people off the cruise ships when they land in Gladstone. And I just think for people, I think about those homeless mm. people who you just said, you know, have admitted they don't do anything with their day. And I think of these people who give their time freely without wanting or asking for anything other than the joy of being able yeah, to do it. Right. You know, we went to the entertainment centre. You went to Shania Twain yeah. uh, and we went to Highwaymen the, the week before. And all the people that, the ushers yeah. that let you in, I believe, are volunteers. So, you know, it's great to see people supporting people Hey, just like a quick that. one. Dusty Guinea's on. God love him. Did you see him at the races last week? Oh, possibly. He, he might have been a bit dusty like me. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. He's a good, dusty young man when he gets out on the drink, but he's a beautiful boy. So we um, yeah. We've got a few people joined. Lockie Day's on. Um, Brian, yeah. Bernadette, my friend Bernadette Dodd. Hello, Bernadette. Just saw her and, last night. Bradley Hood. Hey, Bradley. And just as we start sort of finishing up, I suppose, in 45, with 45 minutes on the clock, um, what, um, what's interesting about what you just said then is one of – one of the guys that I've spoken with in the past is a guy called Peter Baines. Now, Baines, he was one of the first responders. Yes. Have, you met, have you met Baines? I, I'm not He's sure. one of Australia's leading philanthropists. philanthropists. He started a charity called Hands yep. Across the Water. So he responded to the tsunami when there was 5,000 dead bodies lying around in um, Thailand oh, okay. um, after the 2006 tsunami. And he, he was so moved, he started raising money to build orphanages Hi, man. for all these kids. Hey, man. Um, and he's raised literally millions of dollars, millions for um, for charity. And, you know, I think about these little guys, these people that just do so much, like, and, and their hearts are so big and bursting with um, just care factor and philanthropy. Yeah. visions, you know, and then I think about someone like the, the Thank You Water guy. Have you heard of Thank You Water? Thanks, Bernie. Have you heard of Thank You Water? Right, yes. so he was a nudgy boy. Uh, I have heard yeah, of that. He was a nudgy boy. Yeah. So some proceeds from every single bottle of water go to creating clean drinking water in some of these third world countries. Susan, hey, Susan. Is you, is my, my beautiful lady. That's my friend she Susan. She's a beautiful lady too, Susan. So, and... I don't know if she's, I don't think she's talking to you, Anton. <laughs> Ros, she's thinking of the <laughs> girls have turned up. My beautiful lady just showed up too. Oh, not another she, bride. Oh, here she comes. God love her. How are you? Hello, baby. Hello, this Hi. is Ros. Hi. Oh, I know, Ros. Oh, g'day, Jules. Hey, Jules. Hey, Jules. Thanks. I've just gone and taken my bike down to get tyres pumped up because we left that pump at home. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I'll leave you to it. Um. <laughs> No worries. Do you, See you, do you want Julie Guinea in this video? <laughs> Facebook just asked us. No, oh. we, we've already heard them. Oh, face Dude, recognition. Facebook smart, aren't they, Ros? Oh, it's scary. Hey, you know what? I was talking to someone about, I don't use Snapchat, yeah. but I was talking to someone this week about Snapchat, and I think it was Barb, actually, and, um, yeah, Snapchat's got this thing. Apparently, my daughter yesterday tells me it's been on there for ages, and every single person on who's a friend with you on Snapchat you can open up the little thing on Snapchat and it shows the location of all of your friends at that exact time. So you can see where everybody is. Yes, that's scary. The world is, Find that quite the scary. The world is a scary place. So, oh, yeah, the guy, the guy with is. Thank You Water, as a young punk, he's not long with a girl. Yes. He was only like 20 when he started this glo now a global brand, Thank You Water. It's been out for about five years now. And... Um, Part of, you know, part of every sale of the water goes to creating clean drinking water in these third world countries. Uh, that's how I spy my kids, said Susan. And this guy, and the reason I follow him, thank you, Bill. Good on you, Susan. The, the okay. reason I follow him is because he's um, he was a nudgy boy. He was, you know, 20 years behind us. But still, you know, um, 
he he just he's just doing big things, and he's only still only a kid. Fantastic, and yeah, that's a fantastic. He, he charity. Can I think they sell that water at Typo yeah. and a few of the yeah. clothes shops. I'm sure there's water. Yeah, I've seen that that's water, it. and pro some of the proceeds go to yeah, um, third world countries and. and, and they bring out a bit yeah. now too, Ros, into a whole range of other products as well. So there's a whole lot of thank you products around. So he, um, him and his business are going gangbusters. So it's really good to see. He commands a speaking fee if you want to get him to come and speak for you. He's up in the 10K at speaker level because people just want to know what he's doing. Oh, and wow. good on him. Well, he's probably and good yeah. on him. He deserves every cent of that. But guess what? This was my feeling about that. Like Baines, he's the same. He's a 10K day speaker. These guys give a lot of that back to their charities. You know, they do it as a. Oh, I was going to say, I bet they don't no, keep it all. People like that don't keep all they're that very, money. They're very giving, you know, and. Um, and Care factor. And that's the care factor. And that's the thing when you command such a. That's the care factor. When you get to the point where you can, you know, you and I were comfortable and we probably drew a reasonable wage. And, you know, when you get to the point where you give, where you can, can afford to give back a little bit, it's sort of nice to be in that position, isn't it? To, you know, we're no Bill Gates. Oh, absolutely. We're no, Gates, but still we... no, we're not. And I mean, like I've said before, as a business owner, you get asked all the time to donate yeah. and to yeah. support charities and. Uh, and, you know, sports functions and all that sort of stuff. And you wish you could help everybody out, yeah. but if you can give something small or, you know, where our office is, um, we're a drop-off point for, um, all my battery's low mm -hmm. this week, we're a drop-off point for um, a Share the Dignity mm -hmm. campaign. Um, so we have, a, we're a collection point for Share the Dignity. So that's where uh, people can drop in sanitary mm -hmm. items for, for mm -hmm. ladies uh, to give to the homeless mm -hmm. and underprivileged mm -hmm. women. So we quite often have people come in on a regular basis. We just had the Bits Ladies Golf Club when I um, was their sponsor mm. this year for their big open. They put a great big heap of um, donations together for that. Mm. Um, we've also got the um, we've got the co uh, coordinated response to community and family violence. Um, mm. oh, sorry, domestic and family violence. We've also a collection mm -hmm. um, point for that as well. And we went into the um, paint the town purple this year. So we uh, we decorated our window purple for paint the town purple mm -hmm. to show our support of um, um, people who are victims of domestic and family violence. You know, so it's not always about what financially mm -hmm. you can give. I think it's about actually mm -hmm. showing that you care, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and obviously you can't support every single charity or organisation, but pick something that you're passionate about that's close mm -hmm. to your heart and that you've maybe experienced yourself. And, it, and it's not expensive to do mm -hmm. that, just to be a collection point yeah. or, you know, you don't, you don't have to, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to do that. And even going to events and things that actually help support uh, the mm -hmm. promotion of uh, mm -hmm. if someone's trying to get something out. You know, Barb and I attended recently the Prostate Awareness mm -hmm. Night um, and just to be able to f go to that and be informed about what those ladies are doing, the mother mm -hmm. and daughter of that gentleman that's passed away recently with prostate mm -hmm. cancer and... You know, I think it's just mm. the care factor side of it doesn't always have That's to true. be someone donating money or, mm. you know, giving a voucher or mm. it, it's, it's, it goes deeper mm. than that. And it's even a phone call to mm. a friend who might, you, you know, might just want to be checking up on. And, you know? and you, um, even going and helping them do something, look after their mm. babies so they can go and get their hair mm. done. Just, you know, things like that. And you that. did the, the um, boob rebuild one too recently, didn't you? That was Natalie? Which um, one? Boob rebuild. Oh, the mm, Restore mm. More. Yep, so Restore More, that was a huge success. Actually, I haven't even announced it. We uh, raised over 13,000. Well, I didn't. I, uh, yeah, I was yeah, there yeah. and obviously bought raffle tickets and helped yeah. with the auction. Um, but the, the community um, uh, that was so generous and attended that, they um, raised over $13,000 from that afternoon yeah. event. Yeah. Uh, so that's to help, that's help, to help promote um, well-being um, and also uh, to help reach out to regional communities uh, for women mm. uh, in regional communities to help them have better access to reconstructive mm. surgery mm. after they recovered from breast Isn't cancer. That uh, so Amelia, um, uh, Amelia's doing an amazing job with that. So there will be a launch later in the year, or, or I think it's actually ne early next year. There'll be a big launch uh, for the fund uh, for the not-for-profit organisation Restore More. Mm. Um, so you know, being involved in things like that. Amazing to stand up there and listen to Natalie's story. She was extremely graphic and honest about the journey that she went on losing her breasts with, you know, having mastectomies after she was uh, diagnosed with breast cancer, 
how scary that was for her, how challenging it was, how she had to trust, you know, the surgeon when just before Christmas, he pretty much said, you need to have it done right now, you know, and, and it's, it's really um, like, God, if you want to care about something and you have somebody who's that close to you be diagnosed with breast cancer and then you find out the journey they've had to go on and she's actually just had her reconstructive surgery last mm. week. So she's at the sort of end stage of, of that. And, and it's amazing the story that she has to share. And there'll be a lot more of that with mm. her uh, sharing her journey, um, you know, with the res future restore Isn't more events. Good on you. And that, that was great. Too. That was, mm. it looked like a, such a big event too. And so many women touched by breast cancer. Yeah, and for us males, obviously it's a prospect. Well, men as well. Yeah. Men as well. Men have breast yeah. cancer as well. And that was the big point they were trying to get yeah. across on the day was, you know, that everyone needs to be yeah. aware. And, well, well, males also get prostate cancer too, so we get a little challenge as well as as well as girls. Too. Um, well, girl, we're coming up to the hour. Should we, do a, should we do a care factor three next week and really delve into what it means to care? Or you, oh, no, you want to do the counsellors next week, yeah? Uh, well, I don't think we need to speak to them for the whole time, but we'll see how mm. it goes, hey? We might tap something onto the mm. end of it, depending how much they've got right. to say. Uh, so we've got Cole Burke lined up to come next week, um, and I'm going to speak with Natalie Musket sometimes through, sometimes mm. through the week. I also um, plan, on, plan on attending a couple of businesses that have just opened. I've heard amazing things about mm. the deli plates. Yeah. I'm dying to get there and speak yeah. to Yvonne and see how it's mm. going now that they've opened in Gundoon yeah. Street. Yeah. And I also heard Candy Couture, Candy Couture, the new candy store down uh, next to the Urella Gym mm. uh, at yeah. Clinton, uh, have opened yeah. as well. I'd love to get down there. I'm a bit scared mm. to go there, I actually. Can't. I don't know if I want to go into a candy store. I might well, never I'm thinking come I need to go Monday because I'm back dieting again Tuesday. So I better go and make the most of it Monday. But that, um, that like yeah, better. Ali Perry was on here, our business manager was on here before. And um, I took, we went up there for lunch during the week. And well, we went next door for lunch to the whatever it is, the windmill cotton. They do lunch packs. Mm -hmm. I've well, I didn't know that. See, I went in and I just saw cheeses and stuff. And I said, We'll come here for dessert. And we went in there after we'd had lunch. Yeah. And the first thing that I saw was like the liver pate. And it, oh, lovely. Love pate. Me too. Now, love. And it. Ali, sorry to, the owners of the deli, so, sorry to the owners of the deli plate. She was like, Gag. <laughs> Yeah, some people are not she into liver at all. Liver. And she, mind you, good on her. I, mean, I think she's only trying to please me. And I said, good on you, girl. Well, you had a crack. Um, but we bought all their cheeses and we bought their liver. And we, yeah, we had a we had a ball in there. You should have done a live. You should have done a live from there. Have. I'm going to from there. I'm being Yeah. And we have to go see, we've got to go see Donna Ellis yeah. too at her new coffee shop. So if you get down there before yeah. me, just jump on and get Donna to tell us all about yeah. her new we coffee will. shop. All right, girl. Listen, being a pleasure. Thank you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Carol. Mwah. Have a great week. Uh, when are you back? Monday night. Okay, well, enjoy yeah, the rest yeah. of your stay. Say hi to Jules for yeah, me again. Have a brilliant she weekend did. and have a great week, everybody. And um, we will see you next Friday at Be the Live Box. Be good. Be good. <laughs> awesome. Have fun, guys.